everybody, this is Corey with Legacy Chess yet again. Uh, today, instead of an instructional video, I'm going to share a little story about my experience from uh, yesterday morning. Um, I had met up with a volunteer. His name is Joe, and now a, a good buddy of mine. We had uh, met up to talk about how he can help as a volunteer. We talked about uh, the school that he's working with, and we talked about um, opportunities for chess in Richmond and Rico that we will be collaborating on. And, um, he also shared some experience of his own because he used to be an advisor at a chess club. They uh, tra traveled, they participated in tournaments, they did very well for themselves, and he's willing to kind of share what they experienced and what they learned with us as well with Legacy Chess. So we can, of course, in turn, share those experiences um, and that knowledge with the students that we have. And hopefully that we can get those um, tournaments going and win some championships as well. But besides that, while we were playing and talking, we actually played a game of chess, which is something I typically do if I meet with someone that knows how to play, we'll sit down and play a casual game. Well, it's turned out we were starting out pretty casually. We went through the opening moves, first five, six, seven moves of the game, pretty casually, still talking, just kind of whipping out moves, not too much thinking going on because we are pretty familiar with our openings um, until we got to the mid game and it got pretty intense. So he and I both kind of started talking less and thinking more because, of course, in chess, you got to focus, right? Um, so as things got more complicated, as things required us to more calculate more and think more about the position, like we weren't even probably meaning to do so, but the conversation kind of dwindled away. Like what we were, whatever subject we had in mind, like I, I barely remember. <laughs> I could probably recall it later, but it was mostly everything was becoming slowly and slowly more focused on the game and less about the conversation. And it was actually a very exciting game um, because I end up I had a slight advantage and I tried to take a risk and I started attacking his king side probably way earlier than I did and I, than I should have with little preparation. All I, I'm now looking back, I looked at the weaknesses of my preparation was I had my pieces focused in the right direction. So they all had the same end goal, but they weren't coordinated correctly, right? So since they weren't coordinated correctly, he was able to exploit that weakness and he was able to trap one of my pieces. So I actually ended up, I lost my advantage and ended up down a piece, which in that position, you get a couple options, right? You can either just resign then and there and just be like, okay, let's start again. I made a mistake. Okay, let's play again. Um, or me being me, if I still feel like I have some opportunity, a slight advantage, to, not slight advantage, well, some compensation that I can try to, to capitalize on, I will take that chance. Um, and it requires, well, it required me to go into a super, like a think tank, right? I had to evaluate the situation in a whole different light because I couldn't play as I normally was playing, especially since I had just lost a piece. So if I, I can't continue the strategy I had before, with it a piece at disadvantage. Now it's now it's an issue for me. He's going to be playing for an end game because he'll always have one more piece than I do, right? So during my evaluation, I noticed that the piece that he had that I did not have was out of play, meaning that it wasn't really part of the action right now. And if it did become part of the action, then I'd be in serious trouble. So what I had to do is part of my plan and part of uh, the decisions I was making for the moves. I had to make sure that piece stay out of play for as long as possible. Meanwhile, trying to create problems in his position. So I had to try to frustrate his position as much as possible. I tried, I knew he had a winning advantage, but I wanted to limit the mobility of his pieces as much as possible. So it wasn't that way, right? So by complicating the position, by frustrating it, by keeping his pieces at bay, it forced him to think harder and longer about the positions where we weren't even really having that conversation we had before. Um, so what ended up happening was we trade off a lot of pieces. He, um, well, not a lot of pieces. Um, he opened up the position. He opened up his attacking chances, and he went for a winning um, position, I think, too early on. Uh, if he had taken the time to kind of reevaluate himself and change his ideas and kind of just sit back and win slowly and kind of break my position down, he would have won the game. But fortunately for me, he went for the attack a little too early, and then I had just found a nice little tactic at the end and found a way to win the game. And it, what that game taught me was, one, is like resiliency. And I really want to share that with students that because a lot of them, a lot of the kids that we have today, they will react when they see a piece and they'll take it right away uh, without really thinking about the alternative. Because, I mean, it makes sense, right? You're down a piece. If you have the opportunity to take it back, they want it right away so you can equalize. But that's not what I did. In the position that we had, I had an opportunity to take back that piece because he had sacrificed it back for compensation, right? He was trying to open up my king side more so he can attack, have a clear view of attack. But I did not take it back. Instead, I still allowed him to keep that advantage piece-wise, value-wise. Instead, use that time. I gained a tempo. 
I, so I gained extra time to attack his king further. Because if it's either I'm going to checkmate him, I'm going to win, or I'm going to get broken down and I'm going to lose because I'm it's going against four major pieces versus three, right? So fortunately for me, I found a way by going to my think tank, changing my ideas, uh, not sticking to one plan, opening my mind up, figuring out what the situation called for, and finding a way to um, earn a victory. So it, it took some like some experience, and it took a little bit of creativity and a dash of faith <laughs> to get through it, but I had a lot of fun. And I mean, I, even if I had uh, lost the game, I would have been just as happy with, the, um, with how things went uh, because it really forced me to kind of think outside the box to get to where I was. And by putting myself through that situation, instead of just resigning, I'm really going to, it's going to sit with me in my head of everything that I experienced. So if having that piece down and being able to experience what I was going through with that piece down and the change of pace will definitely force my mind to remember it. Make sure you do not lose pieces, right? Make sure your pieces are coordinated. Make sure when you're attacking, you're sure about what you're doing. Do not overextend yourself. It sits with you instead of just going games like quick like this. Like you don't want to just go through, you want to sit and really figure it out and go through it, right? So that's something I want to share with kids. And also the experience of um, having a new friend that's a strong player that can play against me and we can have fun together, learn together. After the game, we went over the moves that we had made. We talked about each other's mistakes, each other's um, the good moves that we made from one another. Um, and then afterwards, he shared um, with me some books that he, he suggested some books to me that weren't really even about chess. It was about how to think, right, which is what we're about with Legacy Chess. We want to teach kids how to think. Um, a lot of them will learn that anybody will say to them, like, you can be anything you want to be, which is true. I believe that 110%. You can be whatever you want to be but you need to know how to do it. You need to have the tools and the experience to be able to do those things. You need to know where to need to place yourself. You need to know where you place your thoughts. And like in my game, I have a very, I have a good knowledge base on what it takes to win. But sometimes in the moment I have to shift my ideas to be able to find that victory at a different light. Because if I just do the same thing over and over again, I'm not gonna win my games. It's, pretty, it's too obvious, it's too linear. So you have to learn how to change up, be versatile, you know, change your mobility, change up, you know, figure things out. Um, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, I'm happy to make a uh, new friend, Joe, who's going to be volunteering with us. And uh, yeah, I look forward to having more stories to share with you guys. So um, again, this is Corey of Legacy Chess. Let me know what you guys think. See ya.